Hello everybody, so today I wanted to make a video talking about the things you should probably know before coming to Korea. I did a lot of personal research myself and I decided that I also wanted to make a video talking about the things you can expect in Korea because there are a lot of other videos talking about things to prepare for before coming to Korea, things to know before coming to Korea. I wanted to make a video that's kind of talking about the other stuff that not everybody else is talking about. I know everybody says this, but just hear me out. Also, if you're new to my channel, hello, welcome, I'm Janice. I make videos talking about learning languages, specifically me learning Korean. Korean occasionally. I will make videos talking about Korea as I've been in Korea for six months and I plan to stay for quite a bit longer. I used to make videos talking about Switzerland and living in Switzerland and what's it like. I have made videos talking about my eating disorder recovery. If any of that sounds interesting to you, why not stick around? While other YouTubers might make this video on the perspective of Seoul, I'm making it from the perspective of a person who lives in Daegu, which is the either third or fifth biggest city. So first things first, what should you know about before coming to Korea? I think one of the bigger ones is culture and to do with politeness and what could be perceived as impolite despite you not wanting to be impolite. You have to be very respectful of elderly people. The way you can show respect to elderly people is, for example, on the subway, if an elderly person enters and you're sat down, give them your seat. This one is especially important if you are seemingly the only person who is noticing the old person. Other people, whereas they know that it's the culture to give up your seat for elderly people, not everybody does it. You don't want to be the rude foreigner who doesn't know shit about culture. Just give up your seat, it's not that bad. If you don't give up your seat, people might think of you as rude, but just as a general rule, give up your seat for the elderly. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good one. Don't mind the hair change, it doesn't matter. I feel like giving money is very different in every single country. One thing you should always do in South Korea, or you should try to do, is either give it with two hands, or you can just support your elbow or your hand like this. That way it's also sort of giving it with two hands. What you shouldn't do is it with only one hand, that's seen as very rude. To make it even more worse, is if you turn your body away from them, don't even look at them and just hand them the card like this. Basically giving somebody the middle finger who works there. And let's be honest, they're already on the page, so like, do you have to be the rude person? When saying hello, you kind of do a little bow. Now, you don't have to do like a full like 90 degrees angle bow. What you can do is you can just do like a little like a little nod. That's it. Now, when it comes to apologizing, if you have done something wrong, you can bow a little bit lower. But like normally the 90 degrees angle bowing is not really done unless the person is elderly or you really fucked up big time. One thing that I find very interesting about Korean culture is that stealing is almost non-existent. It still exists, but it's a lot less prevalent than say in Europe. For example, in a restaurant in Italy, you would never ever ever leave your phone on the table and then go to the toilet. Your phone is gonna be gone afterwards. The thing is, in South Korea, there are a lot of CCTV cameras. If your shit gets stolen, you're most likely either gonna get it back or they're gonna be able to find out who did it and find that person. But because of all of those precautions, people just don't steal. In South Korea, people actually mark their table with either their wallet, their jacket, their entire bag. They will just put it on the table, mark it as theirs, and then go and order something. That is very common. In Europe, I would just do it with a jacket. In Korea, it's normal to just leave your laptop, your phone, anything on the table and then go away and then come back and stuff will still be there. What kind of food can you expect in South Korea? If you're planning on solo traveling in South Korea, you might find that eating out is a little bit more difficult. In South Korea, it's seen as kind of sad. <laughs> So eating alone is seen as something that's a little bit weird, a little bit strange. Not a lot of people do it. Nowadays, more and more people are doing it, but it's still seen as something that's a little bit like, ugh. And not a lot of restaurants can accommodate. Usually when you go to a restaurant in Korea, up front they will ask you how many people are there. If you answer only one, they might look at you a little bit strange. Don't get bothered by it too much. When you sit down, you might find the next problem is that a lot of the meals are meant for two people. Because Korea is a sharing culture. Even if you go to a Western restaurant or a pizza restaurant, the pizza is usually meant to be shared between two people. All the portions are a little bit bigger. Be prepared to maybe not be able to have a takeout. A lot of restaurants that I've gone to in Seoul and in Daegu have said, oh, we can't do takeout. They can do takeout, but they can't put something in a takeout box that is already on your plate. I don't know why, but I've been denied that a couple of times. Another thing to note about the food is if it's red, it's going to be spicy. Depending on your spice tolerance, you can think of Korean food as very spicy or not spicy at all. Personally, to me, most spicy food here in Korea is not very spicy. Occasionally, you will see it in menus that this level of spicy is shin ramyeon spicy. It's an instant noodle type of ramen. If you tried shin ramyeon before and know what spicy this level that is to you, that would probably be helpful. Western food that's salty, in Korea most likely, you're not gonna find that it's salty. A lot of Korean fusion foods that are salty in the West 
are sweet. Especially the bread. People are very disappointed with the bread in Korea. I went into a bakery, I saw garlic bread, I got excited because I love garlic bread. Went inside, bought it, bit into it, there was sugar syrup on top and I was like, oh no, no, no thank you. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm saying it's not what I wanted it to be. We had ordered four cheese pizza and with it they gave us a little dish filled with a clear liquid and it turned out it was sugar syrup. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take the pizza, dip it in the sugar syrup and then eat it. I tried it, I hated it, not for me. You might be inclined to try it. I definitely think you should try it, but just be prepared that not everything that you will eat will be exactly the same tasting as in your own country. This category is general. What general things should you know about Korea before coming to Korea? Depending on where you grow up, you might be surrounded by trash cans a lot. For example, in Switzerland, every single bus stop will have at least one trash can, and every few meters or so, you will find a trash can. In Korea, it's the complete opposite, but it doesn't mean it's dirty. Korea kind of has this weird thing where there are no trash cans, but there are organized trash piles, but they're not government organized. It's more like one person puts down a cup and then other people follow. And at the end of the day, there's a little trash pile and in the morning it's gone. I don't know how it works. I don't know why it works, but it does. The streets overall are very clean. I asked a few Koreans as to the reason why there are no trash cans around here. The reason is apparently because they used to have trash cans, but people would bring their actual trash from home and put them in the public trash can and would therefore overflow them. The government doesn't want to pay for that. So they said, nah, we're not doing that anymore away all the trash cans and now we're stuck with no trash cans. The one little tip that I can tell you that a tour guide has given me is just deposit your trash in the bathroom toilet trash. The next thing is kind of a touchy subject to talk about in Korea and it's to do with Japan. Koreans like Japanese people but not the government. Anything that's kind of to do with like Japanese government, maybe don't mention it. Nobody's gonna like stab you for it. Currently there's a boycott going on in Korea against Japan because of something. I'm not entirely sure about it. You might have to do some of your own research about that. I will put some links in the description. Like, I don't understand the boycott either, really. I just know that a lot of signs have been put up in front of storefronts like boycott Japan, no Japan, and then people made memes with it. No, something else memes with it. For weather in Korea, I'm only gonna say one little thing, and that is pollution. Air pollution is a big topic in Korea. You will see it, especially if you are here during the colder months. If you blow your nose at the end of the day, you can find like black in your snot. If you ever see photos of South Korea and there's like a misty layer over the city, that could be fine dust. It could also very well be actual fog, but you might not be able to see mountains in the distance. One way you can protect yourself from the fine dust in the air is to wear a full covering mask. There's usually two types of masks. There's ones that are seen as more of a fashion statement. They are made of cotton, they have cute designs on them. Those are not really made to protect you specifically against fine dust. The ones that are made for fine dust will usually say Mizemonji on it and they will have a number on it that says like how strong of a protection they give you. I find that people in Seoul are much faster to put on the face masks and protective breathing gear than people in Daegu. It could be like a terrible air quality day and people just don't give a shit here. You can't always rely on other people to tell you if the fine dust is bad today. So I also recommend downloading an app. I'm pretty sure you can just type in Mizemonji Korea and you will get a ton of apps with a ton of different like functions and a lot of different things that they will tell you. Some of them tell you the air quality just in your area. Some of them will tell you the temperature. So those are all the categories. Let me know if you want to know anything more about Korea or before coming to Korea if you have any questions, especially towards Daegu because that's mostly the place that I know. I know a little bit about Seoul but I'm like mostly knowing about Daegu. So this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can stick around to when I make a new one. I hope you drink lots of water, get lots of sleep, and this is the end. Bye!